Recently, I upgraded my camera and it was quite a jump. I went from a Canon M50 Mark I to a Canon R5C, which costs about 10 times as much as the Canon M50 Mark I. And honestly, I'm kind of curious as to how this $500 camera stacks up to this $5,000 camera in terms of photo quality. So that's what this video is all about. In the spirit of trying to see if gear really matters, I have a little game for you. Both of these photos were taken with a Canon EF-M 50 millimeter lens. One was taken with the Canon M50 and the other was taken with the Canon R5C. Can you guess which camera took which photo? Let me know in the comments down below and at the end of this video, I will reveal the answer. Also, if you want to actually see these photos for yourself, there is a link in the description down below where you're able to download the high-res version of those photos. So that way you can pull them up on your computer and really do a side-by-side -side comparison for yourself. For all the tests that I'm about to put these cameras through, each of the cameras had a EFM 50 millimeter lens attached to it with a normal mount adapter. That way we have the same exact lens, just different cameras. So test one has to do with ideal lighting. And to me, ideal lighting is lighting in which I can set my ISO to 100 and golden hour. I love me a golden hour and a backlighting and a sun flare. And that's exactly what I did with these first photos. For this test, we have these two photos. On the left is the Canon M50, and on the right is the Canon R5C. Both of these photos had the same exact settings. They had 100 ISO, 1.8 f-stop, 1250 shutter speed. Both are unedited, but I exported them to JPEG to open them with preview and do this side-by-side -side comparison. One thing I would like to note for these photos is that for the Canon R5C, I was closer to the subject in person, and that is because the Canon and 50 has an APS-C sensor which crops in the photo and I wanted the framing to be as similar as possible so I was physically closer to the subject with the Canon R5C. If you want to see more about what I mean when it comes to crop factors and APS-C sensors and whatnot, I actually made a video last week and you can find that right there. For this test, I'm curious about whether or not megapixels actually matter. So the Canon R5C has 45 megapixels and the Canon M50 has 24. While this doesn't make for sharper images per se, it does mean more detail as you zoom in. So let's see what happens. So I've scaled up each of these photos 10 times and you can see that now that they are both scaled up at the same amount that my framing wasn't too far off in terms of me standing closer to the subject with the Canon R5C. But something else that you can also see is that the Canon R5C does have more detail and more color depth. And this might be because of megapixels, but it could also be because of the fact that the Canon R5C is a full frame camera. So it has a full frame camera sensor. So a full frame sensor has a larger surface area to capture light, which means it can gather more light and detail resulting in better dynamic range and color depth and I think the story checks out here just because of how much color I'm still seeing on the right here with the Canon R5C in comparison to the left with the Canon M50. So the Canon R5C does perform better than the Canon M50 in this sense, but to be honest, unless you're blowing up your photos to huge prints, megapixels don't really matter that much and the Canon M50 overall doesn't look too different when compared to the Canon R5C. Next up, I would like to see what happens when we increase the ISO for both of these cameras. So the Canon M50 has a native ISO of 100 to 25,600, whereas the Canon R5C has a native ISO of 100 to 51,200. So that's quite a big difference, but what I want to see in this test is how they compare in terms of grain as you start increasing the ISO. So let's see what they do. Here are some photos of the subject sitting the same distance from both of the cameras and I'm going to zoom in in a second, but these photos have an ISO of 1600, 3200, 
6400, 12,800, 25,600, and 25,600 compared to 51,200, where both of the cameras are maxed out ISO wise. Let's see how much grain there is when I zoom into these things. So now we're zoomed in and to start, neither of them have much grain, but as you start creeping the ISO upwards, you can see that the Canon R5C definitely has more detail, especially when you look at the threads. Even when the Canon M50 is maxed out at 25600 and the Canon R5C is maxed out at 51200, it still has more detail on the Canon R5C. So for the next batch of photos, it's the same for the Canon R5C, but for the Canon M50, I have photos in which I took a step back because in a real world situation with the Canon M50, if you wanted to get a frame like you're getting with the Canon R5C, you would have to be further away from your subject. So let's see what happens when we zoom in in this case. So when we zoom in, you can see that right off the bat, the Canon M50 is already a lot more grainy and it just keeps getting worse as as the ISO increases, mostly because we're further away from the subject now, but honestly, we're gonna be further away from the subject in a real world situation. I just don't know if we'd ever have to increase our ISO by this much though. By the way, if you would like to see a quick side-by-side -side comparison of landscape photos taken with these two cameras and the same lens, hit that subscribe button because that will be my next video. For this next test, we are talking about capturing motion. For this test, I had the subject run at me when I was holding both of the cameras set at a shutter speed of 2000. When it comes to image processing, the Canon R5C has a Digic X processor. This allows for continuous shooting up to 20 frames per second, which translates into you not missing a step whereas the Canon M50 has a Digic 8 processor. This allows for 10 frames per second with single shot autofocus and 7.4 frames per second with continuous autofocus. And honestly, you can tell the difference just by listening to the shutter of the Canon M50. Compared to the Canon R5C, that the image processing on the Canon R5C dominates that of the Canon M50, which can come in clutch for capturing photos of a subject in motion. By the way, when I was on the beach and having James run towards me, while doing that with the Canon M50, I only got 11 photos, but when doing that with the Canon R5C, I got 25 photos that covered every single step he took towards me. It is what it is, man. Something else that comes in handy when taking pictures of a subject in motion is autofocus. And honestly, the Canon R5C has some beastly autofocus features. It has bird detection, eye detection, animal detection, head detection, vehicle detection something else detection, I don't know, but it has a lot of autofocus options and the Canon M50 does have one shot autofocus and continuous autofocus, but its autofocus system is not as strong as the Canon R5C. However, in this test, it did hold its own and for the photos that it got of James, he was in focus, but same goes for the Canon R5C. So there you have it. The Canon R5C kind of dominated the Canon M50 in all of these tests. But to be honest, the difference in the big picture is kind of negligible because I don't think a normal person who wasn't analyzing the crap out of these photos would be able to tell a difference. And I think that goes to show that what they say is true. Gear doesn't matter as much as the person holding the gear. Oh, and by the way, the Canon R5C took photo A. If you got that correct, reply to yourself saying heck yes. And if you got it wrong, reply to yourself saying you fool. And until next time, bye.